Bachelor Memorial Lecture discussing free speech and what exactly it means to you and society as a whole. Uh, it's uh, at the, the lectures at the Dorsche Emmett uh, Synagogue in uh, Hampstead uh, this weekend. The concept of free speech and how some people push it to the limits. Uh, good morning, Andrew. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. It's, this is so interesting. I mean, because uh, they, these days people just tell outright lies. And they probably know they're telling the lies. And can you, uh, can we call that free speech? Well, that is free speech. The, the question is, what, what do we do with the fact that it's free speech, right? That you, you, often what you hear is somebody making the claim, you know, this or that is free speech, and so therefore, you know, anything goes in any context. And I think part of the issue with that, right, is that you might uh, have a claim there if you're talking about a really classic kind of law school textbook scenario. Let's say in the U.S., I'm, I'm calling you from the U.S., you know, if you are telling lies in a public park, the First Amendment of the American Constitution protects your right to do that. But that doesn't mean that uh, the terms of service on Twitter or Facebook protect your right to do that. It doesn't mean that you're allowed to do it in an advertisement. It doesn't mean you're allowed to do it in a private restaurant if it violates their terms of service. So the, the whole... Uh, claim where people just say free speech as if that's the end of the conversation. Uh, no, it's actually really the beginning of a much more complicated conversation. Okay, uh, now I, I know that you've you've written uh, as well fairly recently on uh, on Tucker Carlson, for example. Now here's a here's an example of a person who goes on and he stretches the truth to the limits and the the you know in a hyperbolic way that's that's you know that makes some of us shake our heads and go, what the hell is he talking about? Uh, right. So, uh, you know, what do you do with a guy like that? Well, if you're Rupert Murdoch, you fire him. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there, there's another example where um, free speech has limits, and they're not always the limits we expect, right? Uh, we still don't know exactly why Tucker Carlson was fired, but um, I, it seems pretty clear that he wasn't fired for, you know, lies or disinformation or peddling uh, racist conspiracy theories because he, he was doing that the whole time. Um, so, again, you know, this is part of uh, an example of why it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. You know, what is allowed on Fox News is, for better or worse, I think, for worse, uh, different from what's allowed in another news source or what's different in a public venue or what's different uh, from what's allowed on a social network. The problem is that everyone claims to be the protector of free speech. So Rupert Murdoch claims to be Tucker. Carlson claims to be Elon Musk on Twitter claims to be, they all claim to be, you know, these deacons of free speech who are the bulwarks against the degradation of society. But when you see how starkly different their most basic definition of the term is, if they even have a definition, it just shows you that this is uh, not a very coherent conversation we're having. How, can, how, can, how do we get to the point where you can just basically say anything and double down on it consistently until, you know, you tell a lie? I mean, I've worked for bosses in the past who maybe you have too. They tell themselves a lie so many times that eventually they believe it. And that's what I feel like we're, we're at, where we're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're definitely in a, in a tough place with that stuff as a society. I mean, one, one way that you can answer the question is that, uh, unfortunately, it often works, right? So we've told ourselves a kind of comforting fairy tale for a long time that, you know, if you tell lies or if you're a bully or if you're, you know, mean, you know, in the realms of politics or business or, you know, media or any number of things, that eventually, you know, karma will catch up to you and it won't work and, and you know, the voters will turn on you or the audience will turn on you and, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I can't tell you that that's always the case. I think mean, it's sometimes the case, but sometimes, you know, just to use your Tucker Carlson example, he was the most popular figure in cable news history before he was fired. So, you know, we, we, we would like to think that all of these things are self-correcting systems and that the market or the marketplace of ideas will just take care of itself. But I think that's manifestly not the case. Have you been up to Montreal before? Yeah, yeah, I love Montreal. Okay, good. So, so you're going to enjoy it. I think they're going to enjoy you too. So it's, I really do appreciate your time this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, and uh, I look forward to it. Okay, and you have a good day. Andrew Morantz uh, is, a, is a staff writer with the New Yorker magazine. He's going to deliver the Ruth Richler Memorial Lecture in person this Saturday, 7.30, Dorsche Emmett Synagogue. You can register. 
at DorseyEmmett.com.